You know what really irritates me? People that are always in a hurry. Where I come from, there's a lot of foot traffic. And that's a gross understatement. People move in herds. It's like being on the Serengeti Plains and trying to stay up front. But instead of 10,000 charging half-ton wildebeest, you have 10,000 quarter-ton pedestrians. When I was just a little kid, I didn't worry about slipping and falling because hardly anybody weighed over 200 pounds. Now the kids weigh that much. And where in the hell is all that blubber rushing to anyway? I mean, it's not like those 1,200 calorie cheeseburgers are going to be gone when they get there. And I doubt that they're rushing to work because all the skinny people that have the good jobs are either in cabs or Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, I know there's a lot of poor folks walking to work. But who in the right mind would rush into a restaurant to wash dishes? Like, hi, boss. I know I'm early. <gasps> but I came early especially so I could scrub all those scummy pots and pans from last night's dinner crowd. I mean, did that guy on the night shift die and I didn't hear about it? And fate help you, slow ass, if you get in the way of one of those high-maintenance dames carrying shopping bags. What the hell is she doing on the street anyway? Did her old man have to sell her Mercedes coupe to pay off all those platinum and gold credit cards that she ran up? No, you can bet your sweet ass that didn't happen. Oh no, she parked the car 16 blocks away to save four bucks. And she's carrying $4,000 worth of crap in those bags. But wait, it gets worse. Five will get you ten that she's in a hurry because she's meeting two of the clones just like her for lunch. And when they order, it takes those brain trusts longer to read the menus than it took me to read War and Peace. Then they camp out at the table half the day gossiping and pestering the poor waiter to bring this and to bring that so often that now the guy is too exhausted to go to his yoga class. Then when the check comes, all three take so long trying to outfumble each other that now the poor waiter misses a really big tip from two businessmen that got overlooked. Finally, after each clone uses their own calculator to make sure that they don't accidentally pay 12 cents on the other's meal, the frustrated schlep storms off. Of course, this works in favor of the clones. Because now they can rationalize stiffen the poor guy. But wait, all is not lost. Because one of them dames feels guilty. So she leaves a dollar forty. All change.